welcome to our fireside chat. Let me unmute you. <laughs> hello, hello, Kathleen. How you doing? Great. And I just wanted to uh, welcome you to our fireside chat. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, it's actually very casual. We have our um, Soap Hub editorial staff, uh, myself, I'm Shadowline, and we've got Diane, we've got Michael and Hope and Ashley. And then we've got um, some of our wonderful insider fans who are here to uh, chat and talk to you. Awesome. Um, and we just basically ask you questions and then we just go with the flow and see what I happens. I have answers. <laughs> <laughs> so, Michael, why don't you go ahead and take it Hi, Michael. <laughs> away? Good to see you. <laughs> it's good to see you and maybe I should unmute. Um, hi. Hi. Um, you know, I was, um, I remember when you first started on General Hospital, um, I was over at the set uh, doing, um, I, I think we were putting together that People Magazine issue and uh, I saw you and I had seen you on on uh, on the show and I just briefly said hi and I, and I, I, I think I said something like, well, I hope you'll be sticking around because you were so on it from the beginning. And I was wondering if you could tell me, originally, was it just supposed to be for a few episodes and then they fell in love with you and said, we got to have this lady around or what was the progression? It was um, July 24th, okay. 1902. No, it was... <laughs> <laughs> many moons ago um in 2012 i've just called in for two days it was a two-day yeah. role and it was basically moving i think uh if i re recall correctly um uh anna was there um tony geary was there and um kimberly yeah uh, uh, what's her uh, the character's uh, name robin Robin, Robin, I'm sorry. So Robin and Anna and, and Duke. And I had to move them from one room. I think I was sneaking Robin from one room to the next. It was basically not a lot. I don't know if anybody remembers, but it was, but it was such a fun character. And I'm educated this way. I'm trained this way. I'm brought up this way. I come from a family of performing artists and it's all about the work. And it's all about you give 200% no matter what you're doing. And I just love that role. And I just gave it you know, I gave each moment, I, I coach actors too, and, and um, younger people or anybody who's studying acting, just a matter of their age. And I tell them, it's like, whatever you do, you put in your heart and soul. It's, it's you know, you have an arc, you find the beginning, middle, end. So, you know, I just try to make it as rich and as full as I could, because that's how I like to work. And that's how it's fun for me. If I just go in and say, I'm moving Robin from one room to the next, it's not fun for me. So I have like a story and there's Duke. And it's like, who's he? And so it was just really fun. And Tony Geary was fantastic. Actually, I think I, I have mostly him to thank for my longevity because he worked, we worked together. And I remember we're walking down the hall together. We have a scene and he says to me, aren't you nervous? And of course, I'm always nervous. I mean, that's, I'm just, I'm like, everything is so important and I want to give that, you know, everything. So I'm like, I'm always buzzing. And I said, of course, I'm, he goes, you seem so calm. I said, I am maybe outside, but the inside, I'm like a chicken with its head cut off. I'm, you know, <laughs> he said he is too. It was, it was a very nice um, experience working with him. And I told him that I'd been in Europe and I had won a Hungarian Best Supporting Oscar. We just chatted. He asked about that experience. So we had a nice chat. Well, anyway, he... I guess supposedly went and told the powers that be about me and he, they said he said to them that they should pay attention and that was i'm so grateful to him because for an almost 400 episodes later and eight years later i'm still here dr obrecht lives and that's i'm just so grateful i never know when it's going to end and i just assume that it's it's a day-to-day -day thing if they need me i'm there and if they don't i'm i'm doing something else i've got lots of other stuff going so but I, I love being there. I love the fans. You guys, it's just, it's such a great interactive career mm -hmm. with, with the oh, yeah. soap opera with you guys. It's just such a fantastic thing. You don't get that in other shows. You know, some people see you like, oh, I saw you narrow. Hi. You know, but it's not this kind of interactive where we have a relationship. We're family, basically. You know, and I, I really appreciate that. And thank, thankfully, this the zoom thing we're able to still connect with you guys. And we're not like, you know, see you five years from now and get my next <laughs> time. So this means a lot. I, I think they've been really smart where um, Dr. O will have these, not only has she never gone that far with any kind of villainy, 
but they also have given her so many moments of humanity. Hmm. I'm not sure about the not having, <laughs> let me think about that. <laughs> there was a few moments of kidnapping Robin for two years. That's really not very nice. Um, stealing some embryos, helping my daughter do that. <laughs> it's a jump change, I know. Um, stealing Lulu's child. Let's see what else. Oh yes, my favorite. Uh, Teo Penglis, he played Victor Cassidyne. Oh yes. I remember. And he loved me and oh, that was so nice, but I didn't really care for him. And oh yeah, so I shot him. Didn't quite succeed in killing him. Got out a pillow, suffocated him to death. And then, <laughs> oh yeah, we blew up the building. So, you know, just details, <laughs> but yeah. But I've been very, I've become softer and kinder since then. <laughs> Peter might disagree. What's that? Peter might disagree. <laughs> He, oh, I, oh Peter. I totally forgot about Peter. Oh, that was just a little fun thing in the cabin. We we're just having fun. Come on, what's the Peter, Peter, to, the, Peter to the bed for the entire summer? Was oh, detail. That's funny. Lovely. Peter, my favorite thing. Everybody <laughs> wrote. I loved it. I, so. got, I mean, he deserved it. And now he deserves it even more. I can't wait if there's anything <laughs> else. But um, yeah. But every I love the questions. Well, how does he go to the bathroom? Well, I'm not feeding him. He does bear <laughs> drinking. I'm not. Feeding. Why would he have to pee or poop? You know, <laughs> I love those questions. They're so just you tortured bad. him and you ate in front of him. That was. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, I tell you, and I think I said this in a couple of interview interviews, and I'll say it again today. I'm from Eastern Europe. Uh, I'm, I'm a descendant of Eastern Europe. I, I was actually made in Eastern Europe, but I popped out in Canada, but I'm pretty much 100% in the blood. It's all about the food. That's why I'll talk about my cooking show. It's all about the food, right? So here I am. It's like, I beat him. Eh. I hit him. Eh. I throw a vase at him. I, you know, whatever. I mean, all these terrible things. But when I had to eat an apple in front of him and a sandwich in front of this, I mean, he was like, and he was so good. You know, Wes Ramsey is just an awesome actor. He went to Juilliard. He's well-trained. He's solid. And he's sitting there going, I was just devastated. I literally was like, eat the sandwich. <laughs> I was, that was really, I mean, it's interesting, but I was so traumatized. I mean, I don't want to say traumatized, but that really touched me to my core that that was such cruelty when someone is so hungry, you know, I mean, all the other things are terrible, but that somehow really spoke to me. And of course, at the end of the scene, he, he got the sandwich. So we're, we're all good. <laughs> So I didn't have to, you know, I, I'm like, he ate, he's good. He's not, you know, hungry. <laughs> you see, that's what I mean. Just when you've gone really, really far, they, they, they pull you back a little bit. You know, it, it's brilliant. Um, one of my favorite episodes, and they reran it, I think, maybe last year or the year before. Time is just all blurred together. Seriously. But was the Christmas Krampus? Oh, yeah. I didn't even know that was a real thing until I Googled it and found out that it was really real. So that made it. What was and it, you know what? I I give credit to the show for for doing this story because it brought it was so popular that episode and the story they made a movie out of it. They actually made a movie out of it. So ah, hi. So, so yeah, they made a movie out of it, and um, I don't know if anyone saw it. It's a horror movie. I didn't see it. I don't like horror movies. They scare me. I mean, I get upset about the sandwich, eating a sandwich in front of somebody. Uh -huh. So you can imagine, you know, and people are like, how about playing a doctor? It's like, don't show me a Band-Aid. Don't, I mean, I go to the doctor for a shot. I'm like, <gasps> you're like, just such a wimp. So, but I play a doctor, yes. So, yeah, anyway. Were you familiar with the whole Christmas Krampus thing or, or did you have to research it? I, I... Okay, well, I, I did research it because I anytime I get something I don't quite know or don't know, I research it because that's part of your homework as an actor to know what you're doing, who you're doing, what, you know, all, all that information is really important. Mm -hmm. I did know something because of my European background, there is the, you know, if you're a good child, you get this. If you're a bad child, you get that. You get coal, you get, you know, so there's all kinds of, there is, there's definitely some, uh, some some of that I knew, but I did research it and the pictures and the costume. Oh, that was fantastic. That was absolutely fantastic. I have a little story with the costume though, because I don't know if you guys remember, I had to come down this band, you know, this long staircase. And that was the whole thing. The helmet, it was like a it was like a uh, motorcycle helmet, but it was like I want to say 20 pounds, and I don't think I'm exaggerating. It was so heavy and it fell forward. 
the way it was balanced. So I'm coming down the stairs and there's little eye things, but it falls forward and we practice once or twice. Well, I am blind. I am just like totally cannot see anything. So we did this whole choreography where I'm like grabbing the staircase wow. and down because I can't see because this whole thing, it just, that's the way it's made. And for whatever reason, I guess the shape of my head, but that was, I love that. And at the bottom, I take it off and then we have the whole story, but that was so much fun. And that story has resonated with a lot of people and a lot of people didn't know. So it's fun when we can educate the audience or by sharing stories for fun on a soap opera and it turns out it's actually true, a true, well, true, a true mythology or something. So a fairy tale, some child story, but it is actually historically part of the history of, of Germany. So that was yeah. interesting. Yeah, it's fascinating. Um, I was- The episode that just happened. The voting episode when they yes. went back in time. Oh, that was wonderful. I love that. Mm -hmm. I, I, I just, I really give G General Hospital kudos. That was a very, I thought important story. I, I mean, I played a suffragette. I played Emma Goldman back in, in theater in New York 40 years ago, 35 years ago. And I love that role, but I was a suffragette and I'm really proud about that. Turns out that's not a good word, it's suffragist. Yes. So, you know, even that, just learning those little things, I'm like, wow, so it's like you learn something new every day. It's so cool. But I thought it was a very intelligent episode and well done. And the kids, they, the acting was terrific. So. Yeah. Um, what did you think when they decided to tie um, uh, Britt to you and, and make her your daughter? Because I just thought that was just great for both of you. And, 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 and I just thought that was fantastic because we would see Dr. O kind of push Britt into, into maybe places she might not want to go and then there's like a nice push pull back and forth. I guess it's that old expression. If it's not one thing, it's your mother. But um, <laughs> in this case, for sure. <laughs> yes. But um, uh, t tell us, t tell us about when they when you found out they were going to make Kelly uh, Kelly's character a relative of yours, and, and what's it like working with her? Because she she just has way. You both have way too much fun. It, it's just so much entertainment. I, I'm really glad that you like that. Um, I actually, because I worked a couple of days at General Hospital, right, back in August, that my first couple of days were July, it aired August 31st. And then I left and I thought I was done. And a couple of months later, yeah, it was a couple of months later, they called up and they said, we'd like to give you a family. We'd like to have you back. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> you know, it was such a, and a, a beautiful thing because I don't have kids I have a wonderful husband he's got a son we have grandkids to have you know their their kids but they're my grandkids too but I don't have my own children mm -hmm. and I, I come into the studio and I come up to the sound stage and there's this gorgeous girl and they're like here's your daughter and I'm like oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure I started crying because it was just like wow they gave me such a beautiful daughter and she's a sweetheart and we have fun and she's a riot this girl has swag this word i don't even know what that is i definitely <laughs> don't have any i don't even you know where you get it where you can buy it but this chick she's solid swag she's like oh yeah, yeah come on she's fun and she's right and i'm like i'm the uptight mother so the kind of the cast it's really good it's kind of take me from my real life into you know dr over i i was really upset i remember the first time our first scene hey how you doing you know it was a bitch -a. And I slap her and I'm like, oh my gosh, what a great way to start. And the poor girl, Kelly had broken her ankle or her foot, I think. And mm. so she's on crutches for her first scenes. I have to like smack her. And it was like, it was, and she had to, we have, we have to go from downstairs. Um, if you guys have, well, those of you who haven't been to the studio, there's a ground floor that you come in where we have hair and makeup, our dressing rooms, rehearsal hall, sometimes what we use for nurses ball or something like that. But then you go upstairs and that's where the sound stage is and that's where all the sets are. And you have to, there's an elevator, but there's also stairs, but you have to walk quite a bit to get to the elevator. So it's closer if you go to the stairs. Well, here's this girl on <laughs> crutches <laughs> coming up and down the stairs, but she was a trooper and it's it's always fun to work with her. We always have a great time. And, and the last time I worked with her was when um, I'm in jail and she, you know, she came to see me and she wasn't very nice. So right now I don't <laughs> like her. <laughs> she was not yeah. nice at all. <laughs> Wait, what? She wasn't nice at all, but I had thought I had heard that they were, she was going to work with Franco to try to free you. And then I don't know if she got another job and they had to rewrite it or whether or not I had just heard wrong. I, I don't know. I, I think she ended up going on the coronavirus hiatus. 
Mm. <laughs> Mm, I, I, you know, I, I can't imagine what it's like nowadays with, um, I mean, even though Station 19, and I'm not sure if she's going back to that or not, but, but it must help that it's right there on the same lot. Um, something else they did that just really was like, it was one uh, twist after another, and GH is really good about just constantly throwing the, these twists out where you, you don't see it coming, which is hard to do and great that they do it. Um, when um, Dr. O was holding the photo of, of Faison, I'm going back. Um, they're all on my DVR, so for me, it's not that long ago. Um, <laughs> and she, um, she, you know, you know, it's her father. And then they show the photo. Did you know the true, the historical, long-running significance? I know you'd worked with um, uh, Anders. Anders, or had you yet? Uh, when when it was revealed that, you know what, you were working maybe with Ian, who was made up to be like Faison. I'm going to have to watch it. Again. Faison was made up to be like Ian. Yes, yeah. thank you. Yes. That. Yes. Thank you, Hope. Um, yeah. Anyway, did, did you know the historical significance of making her, uh, Brit's father be Faison, who's just like the all-time baddie of, of maybe all soaps? I, I honestly don't know the significance, but I know that when they tied me up with him, it was fantastic because it was how <laughs> intelligent, you know, there's this like super sharp, it's a perfect, the, the, he's the perfect type for Obrecht because Obrecht loves intelligent, sharp, cre I mean, I don't want to say creepy, but you know, dark, deviated. You could say creepy. creepy <laughs> deviated, but she doesn't think that. So I, that's, I'm just saying. Right, something. right, she, true, she fair. She thinks it's genius. And for her, and, and I'm and people say, how could Obrecht do that? I'm thinking, are you kidding? Each one of us, and don't don't tell me otherwise, don't tell me you haven't fallen for somebody that probably wasn't right for you. <laughs> you know, your parents are going, What are you thinking? You know, or something, or you just fall in love with somebody, or you just have a lust or a right. passion or chemistry or something. So it was totally easy for me to buy that for Obrecht to go, oh. This is the man who's going to be the father of my children. We're going to have brilliant children, you know. And and that was, I think, the mastermind. It's like I want his children, and then of course everything went to Helen <laughs> and Bag or whatever the expression is. Um, and one other uh, beat I wanted to ask you about is going back a little bit also, but I thought it was such a fascinating uh, uh, handoff of sorts where Anna had gone in to talk to Faison. In, in prison and then he reveals that Robin's alive and he says that you're the only one I've loved. It's you, you, you. And then Finola did this thing <laughs> where sorry. I thought, what, what, what is she doing? Like, why is she reacting this way? And then the mask came off and it was you. And can you talk about that story beat where like did Finola ask you questions? And then, and then how did this switch off happen? Like when you came in and how, how much of that mask was on you? And then how much, you, you know? That was, I, I, it, that's a mask that was made by uh, Joe Belasco, I believe. Just fantastic. I mean, the, the props, the, everything they do is great. However, I was told that I would be playing Anna. Mm. That's what I understood. So I'm working on getting her finales. I'm listening to her, uh -huh. her accents, I'm her mannerisms. I mean, I'm twice her size. She's like four foot three, you know, 60 pounds wet. And I'm twice <laughs> as tall. And I'm, a, I'm a bigger woman. You know, I don't think I'm necessarily huge, but you know, I'm a much larger woman. So here she is this little tiny thing. And I'm like, I'm going to play your twin now. It was a very strange thing. But again, you know, we had the same clothes. And we had the same thing. But I worked on her. You know, it's like when you have that character, you do that homework to figure out how to do her voice and how to do that. Turns out it wasn't me playing her. It was her playing me as her. I mean, it was just anyway, it was a role for her, right, it was right. a vehicle for me. It was a vehicle for Finola. And I'm totally fine with it. She deserves it. That's the, sure. I'm fine with it. But that was the uh, for confusion for me. So when I let go of that, it's like, okay, that's, I won't be doing that. That's fine. But there's that one scene where they had the yeah. mask, and that was all. It was just like literally, <laughs> we had it here, and from here it was just to pull it off. But I mean, it's very tight feeling. You can't breathe. In that. You know, it's it's fantastic, and the costume is great. But it was just, it wasn't. I wasn't her, and she wasn't me. We were just right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Sharing it a bit. 
but it, it was it was a brilliant twist. It, it's like yeah, the type of thing where you just don't see it coming. Yeah, I think it's one scene that nobody ever forgets. <laughs> <laughs> they definitely like I like yeah peeling that off is just so it just was boring so I had little, and it was fantastic because they put little pieces of like plastic, <laughs> plastic stuff it as was there would be but it was so well done I'm like you know peeling and that and and working with Anders is just I mean that guy's fantastic yeah but he keeps you on your toes because I think the language so he, he there's a couple of actors that it's not a language barrier that just love to you know, be fresh and spontaneous and improvise. And that is not my genre. And it's certainly not my way of working. I come from theater and it's like, you have to give each other your right. cue lines. And so some actors are not that, they're like, oh, I'm working with Kathleen. Oh shoot, I got to learn my line. You know, Cause they like, they kind of get the gist of it. And they like say whatever they want. I'm like, no, help me out here. I need my cue line. I, you know, it's like, so, but I admire that. And, and Andrews is one of them, but I think it's because the language. So he would just, but also he would just, I think it's style of acting. He would just go off in a tangent and he's strong and he's wild. And it was like, oh, you know, he was great. I mean, he, he was really a fantastic actor. I, I met someone who worked at the closed captioning Institute and what the scripts do, what the shows do is mail the scripts to the closed captioning institute. So they input the dialogue from the script, which is not always the dialogue yeah. that is- oh, you, you notice that. that. That ends up on air. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know if that was years ago. I don't know if they've since um, fixed it, um, but the, the person I met said there was only one soap that was really true to the script. Which one? <laughs> I'll tell you sometime. Oh, it doesn't matter. It's not art. <laughs> it's, I'm sure it's not uh, no, art. It was, no. it, was, uh, it was bold and beautiful. Yeah, I was going to say it's probably bold and beautiful. But yeah, I, yeah, yeah. Half hour and, and they're, they're very, you know, yeah. uh, specific. Yeah. I mean, I think some freedom is good because if a line isn't going to, you know, that's why writers take acting classes and, and um, just to you know, like, know what it's like to get up there and do it. Honestly, I, I don't know, because we have time, we work on the script, we, you know, some of the actors will come and say, I would prefer to say this, right. and then the director goes, okay, but then they make notes, the producer gets the notes, they pass it, and if I, if I want to change something, I know my character, and I say, you know, Obeck wouldn't say this, I rarely do that, because frankly, the writers know the character, they created the character, they right i mean my and also my character is very stylized she speaks she, you know obrecht has a certain eloquence and i can't make that up i don't want to i'm not a writer my job is to take their words interpret it and entertain you guys make it funny make it sad make it emotional whatever the assignment is that's what i'm supposed to do so now to, on top of it all let me rewrite this or just say whatever i feel <laughs> like it's not my world i don't live in that world at all i'm very anal about every word you know and I've made a few mistakes in there but basically I try to try to be accurate if I make a mistake it's because I'm cuckoo but otherwise I try to you know respect the writers that's what they're that's what they're trained for and that's why they went to school and yeah um how did how did you develop the accent which is so unique um uh, well she because thank you she she's Swiss German so it's not German it's not Swiss, and Swiss is like French, could be French, German, it could be, you know, French or Italian or really hard, like, you know, there's so many different variations, but she's also educated. She, you know, I, there was, I remember I had this fabulous office, if you guys remember, it was white, pristine, and I had all these amazing um, degrees, PhD here, PhD there, I'm like, oh, I'm smart. I was very impressed <laughs> with that. <laughs> <laughs> for three seconds so but but she studied in England so she, there's a slight British flavor she's a German but the German if you're speaking like this I was a German that's a whole different character that's right. like Clink and, and I remember many times Frank uh, Frank Valentin he come on the set especially in the beginning he goes you're not Clink you know you're not Colonel Clink I was like oh sorry so so I kind of softened it and make her sound you know more British a little more refined but still a little German so it's kind of this like medium and I'm so grateful because I've gotten a lot of messages from people all around the world who watch the show and they're like, your accent's spot on. And this, I'm like, Excellent. really, you buying this? Yes, <laughs> you know? And they don't even know when I speak now, they're like, she doesn't have an accent, that's great. So that to me, that's a huge compliment because I've made up this some some kind of weird neutral accent to just kind of stay middle of the road, not too, not too clinky. Well, I, I love that shorthand that he would have to say clink, that's, that's perfect. Uh, I, I miss the days of, you know, three or four channels and 
we right. can make any show and we would all just know it backwards know it. and forwards. Now, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm a TV reporter and I'm like, I haven't, don't have that streaming service yet. So, yeah. Um, I'm, I feel like I've been hogging all the uh, questions. Does anyone else uh, have something they'd like to jump in and ask? A couple of things. <laughs> sure. First, I want to I want to ask about the nurses' ball because oh, my favorite favorite thing. Because, in the whole world. I mean, Lisa was the highlight. <laughs> I mean, my, my personal favorite was guilty with um yes. Mr. Howard. Oh. Yes. There was there was nothing what a like great that, but... song choice. <laughs> you yes. know, love that love the song. But do you do you have you had any input on what numbers Liesl's going to do and how is that chosen? Zip. Zip. And I, I, again, it's like, I don't want to tell, I mean, I, I would love to like Christmas, I'd love to do silent night. And, you know, I have certain things that I would absolutely love to do, but I, I just kind of like what Michael was saying before, it's like, you know, about the scripts and you have, you know, look at them and you never know which way general hospital is going to go. And for me, I love that because each time I open a script, it's like, ooh, what's in here today? You know, I was like, oh no, I'm gonna kill. I'm gonna what? I'm gonna beat him. I'm gonna starve. You know. So the nurses ball for me because I never know if I'm gonna beat. This year I was so disappointed I didn't get. I'm always like sitting here sobbing. My husband's like, it's okay, you're fine. You know. I'm oh, not really? But I I love that because I'm trained in musical theater. I sing. I I I dance. You know, I danced for years and and sang, studied singing for years. And and when I get to put all that together and do music theater and, and live. I lived in New York for 10 years and studied theater and performed theater and did musical theater and did nightclub acts and all this stuff. So, and then I put it on the back burner because you really, I want to make a decent living as a, I want to say, they call it a theatrical actor, a legit actor, which is, you know, that's not on, it's like film and television basically. So I put on the, that on the back burner, but now I get on nurse's ball, I get to sing and dance and act. I am in hog heaven. That is in front of three, four, five million people. Mwah! it's you know it's a big deal and I take that very seriously and you know I just love that so I hope I answer your question I'm just blabbering here hope but I to me, I do not get to choose and I know that like James Patrick you know Stuart Patrick he'll, he'll go to, he'll say oh, I want to play this song but he he's a composer so he writes it and they talked about me doing this stuff or that stuff and in the end I just don't I try not to even get my hopes up because sometimes like now I'm in jail. What would I be doing there? But last time I was in jail and then here I was in, on, you know, Nurses Ball and we did Willkommen, which is my favorite. But I love, you know, Cabaret and they gave me eight Broadway dancers and they made me look fabulous. And the costumes made me look great and the makeup and the hair. I'm like, I'm almost was impressed by myself. You know, just <laughs> they, they gave, I mean, they gave me this great scenario and surrounded me with amazing talent. And I, I was just like, I got to do some stuff and it was fantastic but the guilty what a great choice and again i'm opening the script and i'm like are you kidding me guilty with frank i mean, this is genius who thought yeah. of this you know so it's yeah, fantastic it's I, i'm always impressed i really am and i love that they really think about the character i know chris van eaton he loves the character he and you know and ron carlevati they created created obrecht and developed her and gave me so much to do and and since Ron's gone you know Chris Van Eaton's taken over and Dan O'Connor and all the great writing staff and I just trust myself 2000 percent to them that's why also I don't want to change the lines they're so good why would I change them they're fantastic you know I really so so I I do not pick and choose musical choices and, and I don't do that with anything because I think they're so great I'm just I'm waiting for each script what do I get to do yay it's like a party <laughs> oh, goody, goody. A lot of work, but it's a party. <laughs> Tell us a little about this cooking show that ah, you do. Kathleen <laughs> is a kitchen. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, I come from four generations, at least that I know of, um, of, of, uh, well, my father was a symphony conductor. My mother was an opera singer, but my father's parents, grandparents, etc., were bakers. And they had bakeries in Romania and in Hungary, all over Europe. And then I come from that performance section too. So I'm kind of a combination. I got the genes of all of them. And I've always mm -hmm. wanted to have a bakery. That was always my fantasy that next, you know, like, like Mrs. Fields cookies thing. And, and when I was working, I was in Hungary from 1992 to 98. I was there for six years working as an actress and Everybody knew me as a certain character from this film called We Never Die. And I was Nushika. Nushi is like Annie. It's like the nickname for Annie. So I came up with this name and I, and I wanted to have a bakery. I thought, 
maybe I'll be the Mrs. Fields of Hungary. I'll be the Nushika <laughs> of Hungary. So I, I came up with this um, bakery and I had a restaurant and had a bakery and had it for years and then came to LA for a couple of years to give it a shot and ended up staying. I've been here 23 years now. So eventually I had to sell it. It was really hard to do it long distance, but I love to cook. Mostly I love to bake. I mean, I do love to cook and, but baking is in my blood more than anything else. And I have the show I'm going to be doing with Coastal Entertainment. And we're starting this Friday night, Friday the 13th. <laughs> what are we making? Well, actually, one of my top sellers for my bakery, my bakery was called Nushi Nashi. And I actually even have a, a picture that I can show you because I had a street okay. sign and, and um, it was really cool. Let me see if I can show you here. This is my street sign. See so if you can see it that I had in Hungary. Oh, nice. See, it's called Nushi Nashi Shutude. Nushi <laughs> and Nushi Nosh, like Nosh is like a snack. Nushi Nosh is a snack. Anyway, so that that was my bakery. I had that uh, for years, and we're going to be doing a, a cooking show, a, a baking show, actually this this Friday night. And if you guys like it, we'll go on and do more, probably one a month or something, and maybe do some. You guys can tell me what kind of thing you're looking for, savory or sweet or something. But okay. this Friday night, uh, I think it's four o'clock Pacific time, seven o'clock East Coast time. And if you want to join on, you can get tickets at fantasyeventsinc.com. That's fantasyeventsinc.com. On their website, you can get tickets. We're just going to have fun. We're going to hang out um, for a couple hours and talk baking. I'm going to explain the recipe, show you the stuff, show you finished product. product. You know, people are going to have a glass of wine or coffee or water or bottle of water, whatever it is you want. We'll just <laughs> be talking about it. And I'll tell you stories. I'll show you pictures etc and it's, um i have my grandfather's apron so <laughs> i'm gonna start crying now you know just things that are very important to me and i had a bakery and i it's so funny because i've been in la like i said 23 years and first couple of years were hard because i've been gone from the business for six years i was in new york and then i i um was coming to Hollywood back in 90 my turns out my mother was terminally ill so i had to stop for about a year went back to care with of her and, and stayed with her and then Hollywood was just like a lost dream so I went to Hungary for two months and ended up having this amazing career there and had a bakery and a restaurant and a theater and worked full-time as an actress and then I came to Hollywood and I thought well I'll give it another shot and I was like I said coming for three years and 23 years later I'm still here but in the beginning it was kind of hard transitioning and getting the career going so every time I thought, well, the acting's not going. Maybe I can start a bakery here in Los Angeles. And I looked for some locations. I find one. I go, okay, I can open one here. Boom, I got a huge acting job that never would have had time for the bakery. Okay, that was awesome, awesome. And then again, a few months later, it was like, mm, again, you know, not much work. No. <laughs> Another location. Boom. So I was like, okay, God, I'm listening. <laughs> I'm listening. I'll stay as an actress. I'll leave the baking <laughs> stuff. But it's still such a part of me. And I, I love playing with food and dealing with food and feeding people. That's kind of my thing. I really, really enjoy that. That's why this whole thing on General Hospital with, with Peter was so tragic. <gasps> Starting. Oh. <you> know. <laughs> anyway, so this, this Friday, it's four o'clock. If you want to join in and if you're on the West coast, Pacific time, seven o'clock East coast. And again, it's fantasy events, Inc.com for tickets and come and join us. I know there's a lot of people. It should be a lot of fun and bring your questions and stuff like that. It's about two hours and should, we should have a fun, fun time. Who are some of the famous chefs that you've admired or, or watched on television or? You know what, um, Jamie Oliver, cause he's really, I'm really into like trying to make healthy stuff. This will not be healthy, I promise. <laughs> I promise. I know Linda, Linda Muller's there. And Thank I know, you. Like, right? And no she's tofu. like, no tofu, I no not this time. <laughs> <laughs> next time, Linda, next time. <laughs> Just for you, just for you, some tofu. But um, so you know that I'm not just be talking about the uh, about the stuff, but the people that I love. So I love Jamie Oliver because he's all about healthy food and, and you know and, and getting to the kids. And so I loved his shows. Anthony Bourdain. I read his book. I don't know if you, any of you get poor guy. I mean, just no. a tormented soul, but brilliant and exciting and sexy and, and just like wild and out there. And I don't know if any of you have read any of his books. I think it was Kitchen Confidential. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I mean, it's dark and it's gritty and it's like oh, very dark, so, very dark, <laughs> very dark. But you know, this is the, yeah. this is what they did, and it was so fantastic. So I, I love him. I, I, I um, we've been watching recently during COVID the the English my little what is it, the English baking show cook off the Br British oh. baking show. Right, that was the British Bake Off. 
they're so kind. I mean, the American shows are like, I'm kidding you. <laughs> you get chopped up the knife. You're like, <laughs> they're like, oh, darling, we have to send you home. So sorry. Oh. You know, so they're just so, so kind. But um, anyway, so yeah, I, those are some of the people that I just love. But I, I don't watch that much. I mean, I probably should watch more baking shows and cooking shows, but I, I don't have that much time. Like right now, I'm in the middle of studying for some good stories coming up. Not that, you know. Not that I, I, I'm going to like, but anyway, so, yeah, <laughs> so most I've been studying and I'm also working on a cookbook, which is called My Life and Recipes. Oh. And I've been working on that during COVID. Again, when I've had time, I'm also narrating audiobooks. So it's, it's been a pretty intense time. But when I have time, I'm just, you know, so this, I'm excited about Friday. I'm like, I know who's coming. I know a few, few of you I've seen are coming. We'll so. get the word out there on that. We'll, we'll definitely get the word out there. Um, yeah. I wanted to ask a, a question about the cooking. Uh, sorry, this is what happens when you have your phone on. <laughs> You're hosting a show. It just came on. But um, maybe I missed this, but what is your all-time ultimate favorite food to cook, comfort food that you've been cooking since you've been at home? Comfort food? Yeah. Wow. Um, interesting question. For myself, because my husband and I, we kind of eat different. Yes, Linda, he eats mostly vegan, but I don't. <laughs> <laughs> he likes because this health stuff, so I have to feed them a certain way. But I really love soup. That's my, I make a big pot of glop, I call it. it there's no recipe. It's whatever I have, whatever, you know, I open this, I open that, I throw this in, I throw that out, I throw some water, some spices and whatever it tastes like, oops. You know, and sometimes I make it into Indian flavor by, by you know, some Indian sauce on it or other times just more Eastern European, like more chicken pot, you know, chicken soupy. It's kind of whatever I mean, but that's my go-to. That has been my go-to thing for my husband I make a big pot of like it's it's a Lebanese he's of Lebanese descent mm -hmm. and I've got a lot of actually his birthday's coming up so I'm gonna be making him some Lebanese <laughs> he doesn't know yet lots of lamb and and mm -hmm. not tofu lamb just lamb 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 and um vegan? But, what's that and he's vegan well it's his birthday <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> well he's vegan for health but we have we have a couple of times a year we're, we're allowed to deviate. but it's actually been fantastic he was supposed to read a book called we read a book called the china studies doctor told me he had high blood pressure and cholesterol and he's slender he has no, it's not a weight issue but he just has health stuff and um so we read this book the china study we read about it and we looked at we tried it for a couple months and he got was able to get off his, his meds and his blood pressure went down and we were like oh thank you so we tried to stick to that you know six days a week yes he'll have some eggs on sunday morning baking every sometimes. sometimes but but his birthday christmas it's lamb. But remember that movie, My Big Greek Fat Wedding? I said, that's not meat. That's not, that's lamb. <laughs> <laughs> right, Linda? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so, but anyway, there's a couple. So for him, I'll make like lentils. That's, this is actually vegan. It's lentils and mushrooms and um, salt and pepper and onions. It's a very simple dish, but it's, it's a very typical Lebanese dish. And it's called mujedra. So I make that. Then he loves this thing called hashwi. And that's with the ground lamb. That's coming up. That'll be thanks. That'll be the side dish on Thanksgiving. So <laughs> big feast for the two of us. He's like, let's get a turkey. I'm like, get a turkey. It's like two of us for like, you know, two little pieces of meat. I don't think so. <laughs> Although I do like a big drumstick. That's like my happy spot. It's like a big drumstick. I don't really need anything else. Thanksgiving's just a big, nice drumstick to chew on. So Thanksgiving's coming up. I know. I know. Time has just went by. <laughs> do I get to ask my one question? Mm -hmm. NCIS. I have to say it. Oh yes, NCIS. Oh, yes. You, just yes. Aired again. you, you, yes. With this, the death of my favorite primetime character ever ordered by you. Oh, so, <laughs> sorry. Jenny Shepard was my favorite character, and so you had her killed. So I'd love to hear what you have to say to defend your character. So go ahead. <laughs> Did you defend Dr. Obrecht or oh, Judge? Oh, from NCIS? From you know Natasha Svetlana. You had two names, even. I had no, wait a minute. You're talking about Judge Lee on NCIS? 
No, NCIS, you played um, a Russian handler of a- of Oh, a yes, hit. Natasha, yes. That was, that Natasha. was, that was, was Svetlana, Svetlana, I don't remember. I played yeah. a lot of Natasha's with the Russian accent. Um, <laughs> yes, well, you know, he had killed my husband. I'm sorry, you kill my husband, <laughs> I kill you. It's very simple, this, that's the math, you know? I'm not well, about- Do you believe him. that he was about to commit, that he wanted you to kill him, that Gibbs wanted you to kill him because he kind of had a suicidal thought do you recall anything I, about I that? I don't believe that's how I remember it. I was, I think I was just, it was pure vengeance as I recall. It's been about 10, 12 years. No, but he didn't go near his gun. And then his friend who killed you, Mike Franks had said, you didn't even go for your, you were gonna go for your gun, you idiot, kind of yeah. thing. <laughs> yeah, but it was actually, that's, that's a funny story with that because we did, we they had a stunt girl and um, she was great, but they were like, Kathleen, could you just kind of show us what, what's going to happen? And then the stunt person will come in for you. I mean, basically I did the whole thing during rehearsal. They had a table, I go falling on it. The table goes, boom. So I did it a couple of times for camera. Then they bring in the stunt girl. I'm like, are you kidding? I just did this three times. I'm like bruised my knees. Cause I don't know, you know, it's like, you fall. but anyway, but that was fun. And he was such a great guy. Mark Harmon is a real doll. Whatever they say about him, it's true. He's just so nice. So it was really fun to work with him. But yeah, I, I think as I recall, it was just vengeance. He had killed my husband 10 years earlier when I was a model or something like that. And I came back to get him because, you know, you killed my husband, you die, period. Understandable. As, as That's how it is today too. I, I you know, in person or on, as an actor or as an not, I do it. I do you, sorry. Yeah, it's kind of thing. Awesome. But yeah, that was really good. And then, and then to, that was NCIS. And then this was NCIS LA as Judge Judy or Judge Judy as, actually, that was her name. Oh no, Jessica Lee, Judge Jessica Lee. But it was so fun to be there. And I just was like, yeah, what? Uh-huh, uh-huh. And those are fun because, you know, you get to portray this character and all these great actors are there and you're sitting there now, you know, they're like nice and they're good looking. I'm like, hmm. <laughs> Well-oiled machines. So, you know, everybody knows what they're doing and you get to just do your part. That's awesome. Yeah, it was it was really fun. The director was great. So Benny Benny Boom Benny Boom. So good good group of people. Really good. And one last thing, Ryan Pavey. We haven't talked about Nathan. Great guy. Yeah, Are you guys Nathan. He's all over Hallmark. He's got a really yeah, sweet weekend with great. that period piece. I'm like, oh, he's and he looks good. You know, you see them in the period piece because I'm thinking he's such a contemporary guy. But they've really got him in a nice costume. And I, we're looking for you've already we're already, you know, it's on a calendar. Gonna, we're, we're recording it. My husband and I, he's like our son. <laughs> you know, he, he's our adopted son. He's just, just I love amazing. that you guys reunited in Canada. I mean, that was I know I was there working on, on Arrow and he was there doing Hallmark movie in the same hotel. And, you know, you saw that on Twitter. Yeah. My, my husband, Michael, is like, you know, do you think he shows me a tweet under he goes do you think ryan's here he's something about vancouver i'm like oh because <clears throat> excuse me there's a hotel in vancouver called sutton place mm. and if you're doing a production everybody stays there excuse me every actor every production every director that's the hotel for projects so i'm like i bet he's in this hotel so i sent him a text are you at the sutton place and he sends me back i'm across the street i'll be there in five minutes <clears throat> so we had dinner and drinks we had a great time so awesome. the, the three of us we just you know again he's like our kid it's like Ryan, my baby and again when I got him as a son I'm like I, I was just so moved to have these two beautiful kids so thank you I'll take him <laughs> that was awesome that was a, a great send-off they gave him um it was so <laughs> so powerful and so emotional yeah um what was it like working with uh Donna Mills oh great yeah fantastic she's really kind very professional i always appreciate that you know it's really i loved our scenes in jail where we're opposite each other <clears throat> sorry she's just just really terrific i mean she she's she knows her stuff i mean one thing i admire about her because when you do theater you don't get to start you know you have like a three-page scene you do it you know you just double check and then you come in you do the scene and then you go on to the next one in theater you have like 60 or 100 pages you start and you don't leave the stage until you're done. So you're like, ah, oh. you're kind of swimming out there with no life support, not, no raft or anything. And uh, she knew always, she always knew, knows her, her stuff. I mean, she knows all the scenes connected. I mean, I learned from Michelle Stafford and I, I really appreciated that where she says, cause I said one day, can we just, you know, run our stuff? She goes, Kathleen, 
we'll do it one scene at a time. And I was like, okay. And I've learned that she's right. You can only focus on this scene and get it done. But Donna Mills would come in, she'd know everything and she'd never have it. Cynthia's like that. Cynthia oh, Watros, yeah. who plays Nina, genius girl. She's like everything. She never has a script, never needs a script. She knows where to start, where to end. I'm like, I hate you so much. <laughs> It's it's really fantastic, but I mean it's a whole you know I just kind of like go along because I'm I my training is theater and theater is yeah four to six weeks to learn it and I'm that's my ten years of training like that so now all of a sudden and you know if you do a, a prime time show you have two weeks to learn it if you're doing a movie you have three months to learn it on a soap opera you have now we're lucky we get three four or five days sometimes which is a miracle but sometimes you have one script like now I have one. I'm waiting for one to come in today for next week, another one, and then there's going to be two more. So, you know, it starts piling up and you're like, oh. so, you know, just get them all in and dial it in and start working the material and not just learning the lines, but learning how I'm going to entertain you guys. This is serious. This is funny. This isn't funny. This is me. You know, there's just so many levels. And again, I, I keep using my old training because that's what I know. And that's how I work. It's timely. It takes a lot of time. Timely. Is that the right word? Time consuming. Yeah. <laughs> but it's good. I mean, that's what I love to do. So, but it's just, it's a different thing. But Donna, to answer your question in a very yeah. short, long question, she's fabulous. She comes and she's prepared. She's kind. She's professional. I loved working with her. And I hope I get to work wow. with her. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, so we are actually, I can't believe it, but we are actually getting close to um, the end of our show. But before we do get to the end of the show, uh, Kathleen, will you help me um, in each of our Spireside events? We usually give out um, Amazon gift cards to our audience members who are here. And today we have four winners. And what I'd like to do is have you announce the winners. So I will um, type on private chat. Um, onto um, Zoom, if you see, and then you can just call out their names and, uh, and then I'll send their gift cards to them after the show. But um, would you like to help me do that? <laughs> <Give out them. laughs> so here's the first person. Um, oops, what am I, there we go. All right, so we have a small group today. And here's our first winner. We have four winners. Um, so I just messaged you the first winner. If you can check your Zoom chat, Kathleen, the private I'm Zoom chat. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And the first winner is Debbie. Yay! <laughs> Congrats, Debbie. Oh, Debbie. Yay. Hi, That's Debbie. A, Congratulations. So good yes, it's you. a $50 Thank Amazon you. gift card. So it's one winner. I'll send you the nice. next winner now. Yes. Okay, so let me. And this is all chosen randomly. I just have it in the box here. So, <laughs> but we don't have a lot of people. So, next winner. Ah. Uh, is... Daddy. Yay! <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Yay! I you love know? winning. All right, all right. The next one is. All right, there you go. And yep, I think I said. Linda. Wow. Linda. Linda. <laughs> Linda. <laughs> and the very last, last not, one you? is. <gasps> Christine! Yay! Yay Christine! <laughs> Welcome! I'm, I'm Congrats! Here. Congrats! <laughs> Thank you guys all so much for being a part of the show. And Kathleen, we had such pleasure listening to you it talk. So much fun. Tell, tell us again about your show on Friday. And so, how do we get Friday. there? What do we do? It's called Kathleen in the Kitchen. Go online, go to fantasyeventsinc.com, okay. sign up. It's with Coastal Entertainment. We're going to have fun. We're going to have a blast. It's at four o'clock on Friday on the West Coast, on Pacific Standard Time, seven o'clock on Eastern Standard Time. I'm looking forward to seeing you guys. We're going to have a blast. And I'll share one of my top secret baking things. So we'll talk and we'll tell stories. I'll tell you some stories and bring your questions, ask, ask whatever you want. So have them written down. You can ask me things and uh, we'll do some talking about the baking, but we'll also share and chat a lot then too. And I look forward to 
Yes, that sounds awesome. And we will have this live on our YouTube channel tomorrow. So we will be promoting it heavily and getting as many people as we can to your cooking show. And I will be there too, because I need to learn how to cook as well. <laughs> well this is a very, very simple, basic thing, but it seemed to be a big hit. It's kind of a little secret. Something I learned from my childhood from neighbors. It's a little Scottish trick, something. And I thought it was fantastic. So I'm, and I shared it in Hungary and the whole country went crazy. When I go back and a lot of people know me as the successful actress in Hungary, oh. but a lot of people have no idea that I'm an actress. And they're like, oh, what happened to your bakery? Nushi Nushi, we missed that thing that I'm going to share. Like, or this product or that product. I'm like, I'm sorry. They don't even know I'm an actor, but they know about the cookies and the cakes and the baked things. And the... so, you know, it's always fun. So it's not there anymore. And now they're just in my heart and my head and my recipes. And they'll be in my cookbook that it's coming out probably in a year from now, by the time I'm done. But um, anyway, so yeah, I, I look forward to it. It's very simple. We'll have a good time. It's not cooking. It's not hard stuff. I will be sharing Lebanese things in the future. But right now we're starting with our first Kathleen in the kitchen. I'm really excited. Fantasyevents.com for tickets. Fantasyeventsinc.com for tickets. I look forward to seeing you guys. Thank you so much for having me. And thank, Michael, you. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you all so much. Thank you for the great questions. You guys are great. Thank you. Have thank a wonderful you. rest of the... All of you, thank take you. good care of yourselves. We'll Stay see you guys on Friday. Thank you so much. <laughs> Bye -bye. Thank you. Love you. Bye. Bye.